Hey there guys, we're back with another uh, workflow live stream. This time as the title says, we are going to be making a multiplexer for this microwave turntable. Uh, originally, I was sitting there trying to figure out, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. I was looking for a display turntable for videos because I want to put out regular content and I was like, ah, you know what? I have these motors sitting around from taking apart microwaves, so go ahead and use one of these. And honestly, it should have just been that simple. I should have just thrown one of these. I still have the plates and the uh, rings with the rollers on them. Also, for the record, uh, in case you weren't here last time I was 3D printing, any noise you hear in the background would be my 3D printer. I apologize for that one. This should have only had about 10 minutes left on this print and then it would have gone away and we would have had nice silence for the rest of the stream. But uh, unfortunately I was still hooked up to Pronterface and I went and unplugged Pronterface and then the print restarted. So whoops, my bad. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. So I uh, went ahead and modeled up this infusion earlier. I didn't do a work full stream of that because I didn't figure it was very important. It looks like the uh, uh, fixture holder, uh, the mounting holes, the mounting holes are correct. I tested them on both of these. I have two different motors here. This one I'm not going to use. I'm just using this one. I'm just checking with this one to see if these are universal for any motors that I get in the future. It looks like they are. Both these brands of motors have the same exact mounting holes so far and it looks like they have the same exact uh, position for the uh, drive output, the drive shaft. Uh, as you can see here though, the uh, I had to break this open because I was way off on the drive shaft. I think what happened was when I modeled it up earlier, I started off on a single component and then went back and switched it back to two components, one for the shaft, one for the motor casing. That way I could rotate the shafts in fusion. And when I did that, I think I miscopied this distance here. So I'm printing out one more test piece, which, you know, this is my test piece here just has the pegs and then a slot for the hole. I also have uh, that test piece on the bottom just to make sure that the spacing and everything is correct on this. That's less important, I don't think. I mean, it may be important to some people, so I wanna make sure that it's right anyway. But the terminal placement is not very important to me. But as it turns out, I did get the uh, measurements on that one correct, so that didn't need to be fixed, just this one. And then these breaking off obviously is just, it's plastic, they're very small pieces, and I had them exactly the sizes, these holes. Uh, one other thing that I will mention before we get started on modeling up the actual turntable for this. Uh, well, there's a couple things I wanna hit, but uh, in terms of video quality, since I've already said something about that, uh, when I'm doing stuff on the desk here, I still haven't really figured out where the best place for my mic to be is because obviously right now I'm staring through my pop filter at my desk is basically how I'm set up here with the microphone straight forward in front of my face between my face and the monitor, which means that I'm actually blocking part of my view of the uh, of my streaming uh, window. And that's kind of annoying. I prefer for this microphone to be somewhere else, but I haven't quite figured that one out. So if at any point it sounds like I'm speaking down when I'm using this microphone, uh, when I'm working on the desktop more specifically, that's because I literally am speaking down towards the desktop because I'm looking at the desktop. So that's what that is. I'm going to go ahead and listen back to the stream and see how exactly it turns out. Um, and then we'll go from there, make decisions from there. If I can, I would prefer to move this microphone somewhere to my left where I have open space that way. Uh, unfortunately, the way my stand works, well, actually, I could get it over there. I could get it over there and it would work fine. It's just, I don't know, I have to keep on turning my head to talking to the microphone. It just seems awkward. So we'll figure out what we're going with this. Back to the topic at hand, these motors. So just as a quick demo, I will go ahead and as you can see, these are AC motors and they just plug straight into 120 volts, 50, 60 hertz, which is exactly the wall outlet, right? at least here in North America, and they just go. So this is literally just plugged into one of the microwave plugs 
that I salvaged. This is uh, normally this would be going to a board. They have a board inside that this would plug into, and then it would hopper off of the board to this motor. But this just you know goes straight here, and let me plug it into demo. And there we are. See it turning there. So this is five six RPMs per minute. Uh, that is honestly a decent speed and honestly I should just leave well enough alone just put this with the plate and a uh, one of the wheels to hold it and just let this go to town one of those things if I want it going quicker I can always speed that in, up in post-processing if I want it going backwards I can always do that in post-processing just run the video backwards so there's not particularly a reason for me to actually do what we're about to do to attempt to make a multiplexer for this and I say attempt because I have a general idea how it worked I watched uh, Tim Burton's video on his mechanical multiplexer so I more or less to get the idea also I watched that really old video I don't know if you've seen it but uh, how a car transmission works it's from like the 1950s or something like that it's a good video I like it but uh, regardless I get the idea slide the gear back and forth gear engages and disengages etc uh, I don't think I'm going to actually put a, uh, a clutch into this system because I don't see the need to it and also the other thing is that this multiplexer I'm going to manipulate manually I don't want to put another motor in here to drive the multiplexer I'm going to have my intention is to have a lever that switches the gear and that lever, you know, one position will be reverse, one position will be regular, one position will be fast or possibly and or possibly slow. So that's the game plan for right now. Uh, one thing I will mention about these motors, and I may just uh, one of those things back to regular content on the channel, pre-recorded content. I may go ahead and once I know more about these motors, I might do a full video. But this motor over here got freaking hot and sounded bad when I plugged it directly into the wall this motor however is you know I've been had it plugged in for like what two three minutes now it's not even warm it's barely you know anything it's not making a whole bunch of noise it's extremely quiet so this is the motor I'm going to go with and um, I also bring this up just to say obviously I'm not concerned about this melting through the plastic or anything like that because again it's not getting particularly hot unlike this one this one I might be a little concerned that I put this inside of a plastic enclosure and it melts the plastic or mount it to a you know 3d printed fixture what have you so uh, I believe that is everything I wanted to say out of the way oh actually there's one more thing um, with the multiplexer obviously when you go quicker with gear ratios you uh, end up losing torque for the speed and that could be a bit of a concern but these bad boys have a surprising amount of torque I cannot actually stop this with my fingers so one of the things it kind of makes sense if it's running at five to six RPMs that means that it's probably geared way down I don't know how many poles are in this uh, that's again something else that I would research before I, I made a video would see how many poles are actually in here but assuming this is just an AC motor with let's say four poles then normally this would be running at four poles is 1800 I, I think 1800 RPMs so to get from 1800 to five to six RPMs is a really large gear reduction which would explain why it's such high cork so if we reverse the gear reduction to speed it up we're still gonna have plenty of torque bottom line so that gets everything I wanted to say out of the way as far as I can remember so let's get to designing and we'll switch back over to fusion now uh, as I mentioned in my previous video if that is still up at the time that you see this uh, I, I, I have set up a second user and therefore I am more comfortable sharing full screen here I'm a little less comfortable because fusion when I open up this sidebar is going to show my username which is a little annoying uh, not even my username my real name which you know on one hand isn't as big of a deal but on the other hand you know better not uh, better not show it so uh, 
that is something that's going to be a bit annoying with this setup but as you can see you can see all the menus now and click menus you can see them pop up if I hit extrude you see this window now in my last video we didn't have any of that because I was doing a window capture and all these pop-ups are on new windows new tool windows and including this uh, this tree view so that meant that nobody could see it in my last video which was quite bad uh, but we've got that fixed for now I am just going to really quick because I need to pop this open and get this uh, get this motor into here I'm going to really quick switch scenes and then I'm going to uh, get a setup here for making this multiplexer save Turn table multiplexer and honestly looking at it right now uh, where's my preview let's see yeah you know what you actually the only thing you can really see is all my stuff uh, all my uh, files and stuff so it's actually probably all right for me to have this open I do have the top line cropped and that's where my name is so you know what I feel comfortable copping over here so I just have this in this miscellaneous uh, project that I keep around for random doohickeys and doodads I have uh, already gone ahead and saved the file over here and that means that I can now insert the microwave table uh, synchronous motor insert So that's that and one of those things in case you're not familiar uh, obviously I'm making changes to this I may have to make another change once this uh, test print gets done to get that shaft in the correct direction uh, but that will update on here uh, shoot actually because I'm using insert and not derive it won't so let me switch that back I will have to derive this since I'm still making changes normally for stuff like this this is never going to change because it's an object that exists for real and it's not a anything I have a ability to modify and therefore I normally use insert just because it's cleaner but uh where are we at derive but unfortunately that is not going to work on this if I got to make another change so we're going to have to derive derive uh, do, 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 do. Turntable, turntable, turntable multiplexer, select. All right, so now this is derived, and therefore, when I make changes, if I have to make another change to the uh, microwave table synchronous motor file over here, then it will automatically update over here. And so long as I've done all my design correctly, I shouldn't have to worry about it uh, goofing up uh, about anything getting misplaced in the design. So, uh, let's see, first thing of business. So, the case that this is going to be attached to is not going to be much of a case. I don't think, I think I'm going to leave it open. Uh, that way I don't have to print as much. So, let's go ahead and start with that because that is simply going to wrap around this and then we'll build out from there as necessary. So come in here, project that, toss in a box, X, do that, make these all, uh, what do you call them, construction lines. We want to leave these holes, obviously, as things to mount to, so I'll actually leave those holes as real holes. And this outer bounding box will be used to do an offset like we did last time whoops tangent tangent and then we'll do an offset and probably do I think I'm gonna do five and the reason I'm doing five is because actually yeah we'll do five here so the trick here is that uh, you can't actually offset an offset, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to do minus two here. And this is what I'm looking for. I want to go ahead and have, it's not 100% necessary. I could do this in two sketches, but I'm going to just do it in one sketch. And I will have 
the uh, outer wall here for the uh, case. Turn this back on. We will go two object, uh, one sided two object, and up to that lip. And this will be a new component. And motor housing is what I'm going to call it. Motor housing. And then we can uh, activate that. Sketches, come back to that sketch. And now we've got the walls on here already. Distance to object there. We're joining, that's fine. Make a hole in it for the connectors, terminal connectors. Project that. And actually, we'll project that. I'll just leave it the whole entire side open. And let's turn these bodies off really quick. Turn that sketch off. Toss this in here. And then we can go ahead and two object. I won't do symmetric all unlike last time because that would take out this back wall too. So there's that. And we can hop back up here. So as you can see, we'll just mount this through this available screw holes. The terminals will get plugged in right there. And then for the rest of it, uh, again, we're going to have a large glass table up here and I don't want to 3D print a full base for that large glass table. So for any more structure, I'm probably just going to use a box or something of the sort, either wood or cardboard, whatever is necessary. That way I don't have to 3D print a full, let's say the plate is 10 inches, let's say. I don't have to 3D print a box that will, well, the ring, the ring will probably be eight inches. If it's a 10 inch plate, the ring will probably be eight inches. So I don't have to 3D print an eight inch plate, and that's especially important because a typical uh, print bed is about eight inches square. So that would be, you know, potentially uh, limiting. Instead, we'll go ahead and just use whatever we have available on hand to get the uh, plate onto a uh, platform. So now that we got this done, just make that black and I'm going to go ahead and as built joint these two together and actually let me make sure I'm clicking the actual components and a rigid joint is fine because we don't want those moving. Uh, I could have done a rigid structure there, uh, whatever it's called, rigid group. Uh, that would, it basically does the same thing especially because we only have two objects right now it doesn't make a difference but if I had a whole bunch of objects I wanted to keep relative then that would be a good use of the rigid group alright <clears throat> excuse me uh, next up we gotta do uh, gearing well see that's kinda the trick right the trick is there's two tricks to this one I didn't bring the uh, ring home that the plate's gonna sit on. So I don't know what shape I assume. I assume, and I may not be correct, but I assume it's the same exact uh, D shaft shape that we have here. I can assume that, that's fine, but I may have to change that in the future. Uh, meanwhile, obviously, if we're gonna have a whole bunch of gearing here to multiplex into, that means that the output shaft is going to be somewhere else. It's probably not going to be right above. It technically can be, but it probably will not be. So uh, next up is figuring out how we're going to multiplex this. Uh, it has been a long time since I've seen Tim Bruton's video on it. But as I recall correctly, he if I recall correctly, he used... Uh, worm gears and helical gears I think actually let me go ahead and pull up the video really quick and it's one of those things that worked well for him and honestly I was just going to take regular gears and uh, mesh them together like just slide them past each other so it's one of those things it's we'll see what we end up with the helical gear worm gear thing if that's what he did I might try to 
replicate that otherwise. Uh, sorry, let me just look it up really quick. I'll just go with what my uh, initial intention was. Uh, I kept on saying Tim Bruton because of Tim Burton. Uh, James Bruton. My bad. I apologize for that one. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Really sorry about that. And that is a YouTube ad. So we mute that. Skip. Let's see. Okay, so it actually, so he has regular gears meshing with the multiplexer and then worm gears are going to be the things that he's outputting off of is how it turns out. So the worm gears then mesh with uh, output gears is how he has it set up. Uh, I don't know if we necessarily need that then. So we're just gonna start with regular gears and go from there. see huh okay so uh as mentioned before i went ahead and installed uh or created a new user and uh i did not realize that fusion did not bring my add-ins over so let's see what happens here i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys stare at my desktop for half a second just till I figure out what exactly is going on add-ins app store yeah I guess I just gotta go to the app store okay let's see uh, where's my gears gears gear generator where's the gear generator plus I like the gear generator plus over the regular gear generator. I don't see it though. Huh, interesting. <laughs> I guess we're just going to... Huh. Oh, there it is. I found it. Alright, Win64, download. And they want login information. So just give me a second while I get this downloaded. Hmm. How much of that did you just see? Doesn't look like terribly much, okay. That was dangerous. Sign in. Never remember. Do do do. Download. Open. Install. All right. Uh, it's please waiting. While that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and come over here. Uh, and let's start talking. Oh, there's the, uh, I wonder what happens on stream when I, uh, oh, there's the print being done. I wonder what happens on stream, I was going to say, when I get the Windows, uh, full screen authentication thing. Huh. I'm guessing I have to, uh, restart fusion in order to get that add-in working so I'm going to go ahead and restart fusion fusion restart so while fusion is restarting let's talk about this obviously 
whatever we start out with has to start from the output gear. Uh, I'm assuming I'm probably just gonna go with a uh, gear and then mesh that gear into another gear. And let's see if, yep, gear plus is installed. So let's hop back over to Fusion. Fusion still look all right? Yeah, Fusion still looks all right. And let's open up, do, 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 turntable, turntable, turntable. Close that up. Okay. So, question is how we're going to line, uh, lay this out, right? Because there's a few ways we can do this, right? We can have the lever rotate long ways I believe we should be able to get to work uh, especially if we go down so we drop the gear down and then pick the gear back up to re-engage it that's what I'm thinking uh, I'm making movements here with my hands that you can't see so let's come back to the desktop really quick so if I got my gear right here and then I got more gears here which determines speed and direction then we can have an intermittent gear right here which the lever is attached to drop it down and then slide it over and then re-engage it between two. That's an idea. Um, actually, rather than uh, have the lever come out the side, it'd be easier to have it come out the top. The only problem is, is that our plate is up top. So that would be a bit of a trick. Another option is to have the gears all vertically so we would have a shaft running up and down and then we would have a long gear here i'm thinking so a gear here a long gear here that slides up and down again and then at each level it interacts with a different gear so then our lever just goes up and down with this gear and that's how we get the multiplexing so we'd have gear intermediate gear uh, and this intermittent gear is however high let's say that each gear is four millimeters thick let's call it that um, then we would have let's say slow fast uh, well regular speed which is one to one gear reduction fast and reverse reverse would have to be a uh, uh, two gears so you can get one going the opposite direction um, because obviously this one spins this way this one spins the opposite way because it's being driven and then the third gear in line which is the one we're multiplexing off of that one's going to be the same direction as the first gear so that's why we're automatically in the same direction as this drive shaft so to get it reversed we'd have to add one more gear after this one to get it going the opposite direction so that's another way is to have a stack have a long gear which will interact with uh will uh, mesh rather with this gear here at all points in its travel but above that attached to it part of it will be the gear that multiplexes so the question is really how do we want something wide or we want something tall and how tall is too tall so again if i'm doing like let's say four or five millimeter thick gears those are really thin i don't know how well they'll hold up but at the same time, if we only have three different directions that we need to go, then that means that uh, we would, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If we have only three different directions to go, we would only need like 12 millimeters, half an inch of space, plus a little bit of room for breathing room clearance. But regardless, you know, that's not that bad. If we instead go 10 millimeter gears, which would be a bit thicker and hold up better, then you're looking at 30 millimeters plus space. So we're up to an inch and a half, inch to three quarters, maybe something like that. Again, inch and a half, inch, three quarters, not that big, right? It's really, you know, this thing, the whole entire assembly here is about an inch and a half, it looks like. So it's one of those deals where I may just be uh, making a whole bunch of hullabaloo about nothing. And just the easiest thing is to have the one gear here instead of the rod and the lever that goes around 
just have the one here and the lever just goes straight up and down and engages and meshes at different areas. So uh, I think that's what we're probably just gonna go ahead and go with to make, keep it simple. Again, it may end up being three inches tall, may end up being four inches tall, but at the same time, again, let me come back to the desktop. Sorry, there we go. So four inches tall would be this tall. Uh, that tall, here's almost as tall as my toolkit here, which is very not tall. Uh, here's a deck box for another video I'm gonna be doing. Shorter than deck box, so that's shorter than <laughs> your typical magic card. So it's really not that big of a deal. Well, uh, actually a magic card, I think it's supposed to be like three and a half, so I might be off a little bit there. Uh, deck box obviously is going to be a little bit taller than the uh, magic cards, so that's why that was that much shorter. So it's a little bit taller than, in that case, a magic card, Magic the Gathering, uh, which is roughly the same size as many other playing card, uh, collectible card games, in case you are not familiar somehow with Magic the Gathering. So that's where we're at. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start building then because we have a good idea of what we want to achieve here. So let's look at this. Um, looks like, what do I got there? I've got a sketch active on that it looks like. Sketch, sketch, turn that sketch off. All right, cool. So that sketch is off. I'll go ahead and turn this join off. And right here on this lip is uh, where we're going to be starting with our gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that there. That will help uh, position the gear. And otherwise, oh, sorry. Left you guys on the desktop again. So anyway, like I was saying, on the bottom of this D shaft, I just threw a, a plane to work off of. To position the uh, gear off of otherwise I'm gonna come up here to create and just use helical gear um, the interesting thing about this is that even though it's the helical gear app and I'm again I'm just using that because that's the one I'm used to uh, using we're not going I don't think we're going to use a helical gear to begin with I think we're gonna just use a straight break gear or a helix angle whatever you call it and here's the next question is how big do we want this gear because the number of teeth is going to influence how big it is and the module obviously to some degree and frankly that looks like that's probably big enough so i am going to go ahead and screenshot this really quick so that i can pull it back up uh, obviously it uh the gear app here is going to go ahead and save that information so I don't necessarily need this but when I start playing if I start playing with it I'll be able to come back to it uh, in case you're not familiar with the app there's other things here I call it app but add-in uh, other things here you could manipulate but I'm not terribly concerned about that I don't recall ever needing to manipulate any of that for 3d printing gears I know uh, I think it actually says like on backlash let's see if it pops up Backlash. Okay, I seem to recall someone saying that you had to add a little bit of backlash for 3D printed gears, but I don't recall it being an issue. So we're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna go ahead and align that. So align the center of the gear and actually modify align. Let's try that again. Here's the trick. So we want the center of this wheel actually. This is the uh what do you call it? Um, what's that thing called? It's the line where the uh, teeth will be meshing. For some reason, I'm blanking on it right now. We want that instead of something else that you can click here. Sometimes the center of the gear, quote unquote, ends up actually being like the center of this point here where the tooth connects. It's really annoying. But if we use the ring, if we use that uh, construction line there, it's normally all right. So we'll align that there, center of our shaft, and then align the uh, bottom of it with that plane that we just made. And now we can capture position, okay. And then we'll combine this with the shaft, Q, 
keep tools and cut and that will give us a cutout in the middle of our gear for the uh, D shaft and then because I'm 3d printing this I will add a little bit of clearance on again 0.05 is what I normally do for clearances and I can now turn that plane off because it's not necessary so there is our first gear and at this point I'm going to take a quick break so just give me a moment and I'll be right back and actually it looks like I never started the music so let's start some music for you that is one thing I'm going to have to remember to do and hopefully the music isn't too loud I did a quick recording uh, local recording earlier and it didn't sound too loud to me but uh, I'll have to double check once the stream actually goes so uh, be right back And we are back. Do do do. Undo this one because I don't need that sketch anymore. All right. So where we left off, we have our first gear. Again, plan is to make one big gear that rides up and down here, continues to stay meshed with the drive gear here, and then meshes with other gears as it goes up and down. So that's what we will get started with next. Um, next question is how big do we want it? Uh, what we can do, so it's actually not necessary for it to be the same size as this to maintain a one to one uh, gear ratio because if this is a gear ratio of 16 to let's say 8 over here, this gear that's going to be interfacing with it this gear that's interfacing it with it we can then have a let's say 16 on top of it and then interface that 16 with an eight tooth gear on our uh, multiplex so our multiplex gears can be eight tooths and that will get us 18 to 6 or rather 16 to 8 and then 8 to 16 and then back to 16 by 8 and that should all even out to, uh, back to a one-to-one -one gear ratio overall at least in theory assuming that I have any idea what I'm talking about uh, next thing I'm thinking when I'm looking at this is obviously uh, let's say that this plane right here right above our uh, what you call it is where we mesh with the first gear because uh, the gear we're having in the middle here that uh, meshes with other gears is uh, we don't want that and uh, we want to make sure that doesn't slide too far down so eh, actually you know I say that yeah no no we want it different size we do want it different size because 
we need it to we need to not interact with the other gears over here so if we just had the small gear let me get the small gear in here really quick just so that we have a better visualization of it so since i just said earlier eight tooth i'm going to go ahead and do that and this gear width normally this matters this is not going to matter for us so i'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and we're keeping it module three so that it meshes with everything else. We're gonna keep everything module three so that everything meshes correctly. And let's get this moved over so I can actually interact with it. Align that. Uh, let me get this plane out of the way here. And that. So now these are on the same level. It's That's actually not necessary. Um, so I'm going to undo that. Um, this is one of those deals where the way this sets up, and I always have this problem and I always eyeball it, is what I end up doing. But the uh, if we look here, this circle basically needs to touch this circle is what we need to do. But a line does not align this construction line to that construction line via tangent, unfortunately. And because it doesn't do it via tangent, uh, things are going to be difficult for us. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to undo this move so that we don't have that sitting in the history. We'll go ahead and turn all these other boys off. Turn that plane back off. Turn that gear. Uh, oh, whoops. Looks like I accidentally killed the uh, gear while I was doing that, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's turn this off. Get this gear here. Get our eight tooth gear back. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the radius of this or the diameter, either one works. So 24 diameter, 24 millimeter diameter. And then I'm going to come back up here, create a new component. And this is going to be the uh, multiplexer shaft. Shaft, okay. And I'm going to set this up first and then I will align this gear to the multiplexer shaft instead. So let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just put a plane right here and just use that as a starting point. It's not particularly necessary. Uh, let me rotate this. It's not necessary really to have this perfectly, uh, what was I about to say? I don't know what I was about to say, honestly. So <laughs> I'm going to uh, shut up for just a moment and get this done so that I can move on to its speaking. Um, where is, this is a little bit difficult to see the construction line here. That looks like the construction line. Unfortunately, with the way the, uh, it, you know, it grays everything out looking at it. Multiplexer shaft, there we go. Uh, with the way it grays everything out, it's a little difficult to see, but we're not that big of a deal. We can make do. Turn these back off. So this is the line we need to mesh with. This is our 24 millimeter line where we want this centered. I'm gonna go ahead and connect these. Keep this, uh, actually rather than horizontal, what I should do is grab the motor housing and grab an edge off the motor housing like that and then this way i can keep it uh perpendicular to that motor housing instead so let's do this and then have that perpendicular so we're going to mesh perpendicularly to the motor housing so then uh, not concentric tangent at this point, now I can create that tangent line and then decide on what this shaft is going through here. 
and I'm going to make this a 5mm rod because I happen to have for another project 5mm rods sitting around. Uh, if you were to recreate this, it's one of those things you can uh, use whatever you have available. Uh, for example, if I didn't have this 5mm rod sitting around, at work I have a quarter inch, I believe it's quarter inch rod that is basically scrap and I can take easily take you know a five six inch piece whatever this ends up being let's say and I'm saying five and six inch piece but that would be overall size I'm assuming again we'll see how this turns out if it ends up too tall we might have to change game plan but my point being is that I can find something else to use it doesn't have to be this five millimeter shaft so long as it fits inside of the gear So let's get this created and we are going to start from the bottom of the motor house object that and then I'm going to just go in arbitrary eight inches in the other direction. Oh, actually I'm backwards distance eight inches and we will change this size later on when we figure out how tall it actually needs to be. Uh, come on Give me that edge fusion. All right, there we go So this is the shaft that the multiplexer is going to ride up and down on and now that we have this shaft we can now align the smaller gear to the shaft and That will then mesh correctly with the large gear so let's get that done. Everything's blue. Abu di Abu die. Try that again. Turn off, turn off, turn off. Turn off. No, I want the shaft, so yep. Alright. So that now can be centered on that shaft. And then I can come back and align the bottom of it with the bottom of the other gear. And obviously in this, uh, the way this is looking right now, if I really wanted to look good, I'd just spin one of these guys so that they're actually meshing. We don't have this overlap, but it really does not matter. So, at this point, right on top here is going to be the uh, gear that we use to mesh with other gears, to multiplex with other gears. I will go ahead and uh, capture position, and I'm going to add just a millimeter here as clearance. So, when this is meshing with the first gear, the first gear that we have on this side, uh, it will be a millimeter above this one. Uh, that's really not necessary. Basically, what I'm imagining here, just to uh, catch you up a little bit with my thought process because I'm not explicit, uh, explicit, uh, being explicit. <laughs> um, I'm imagining putting a collar or some sort down here so that this uh, gear can never drop below this point. Uh, it, it's not really going to be necessary in all likelihood because the gear that's sitting on top of this one will simply ride on top. It's just one of those deals where if they were to somehow, the gear riding on top of this gear was to somehow catch this edge or something like that and then the two gears bound together, started torquing, that might be a little messy. But yeah, you know what? It's, it's honestly not going to happen. So what I just did right there, adding that extra millimeter is probably unnecessary and probably just me overthinking everything so uh let's move on and actually make this next gear and again like i said i'm just going to make this another 16 tooth gear to keep everything the same number all our ratios and then i can go ahead and align this gear with the small gear uh that one yep housing turntable I can align the center of the bottom of this gear with the 
small gear here and now we have that stacked gear and capture position we combined and don't keep tools this time I'm going to actually join and now this is one gear and since this is uh, actually I won't cut it just yet I'm gonna wait to cut out this rod portion from the center of it until after we figure out how long this gear has to be uh, the other thing is obviously this is 10 millimeters still as I was talking about before that means at each level that I'm multiplexing here and again so that we're not multiplexing the same output at the same time I'm going to have to leave a gap of let's say 10 to 11 uh, millimeters between each level so let's take a quick look at what that looks like because it's going to get tall really quick like I said and again it depends what exactly we define as tall so as you can see this is eight inches here that's way larger than that and eight inches is too tall eight inches is 100 percent too tall for this whole entire uh, all right you know what I take it back it is not 100 percent too tall I'm looking at it on my hand and eight inches is probably not too tall for this turntable especially when I imagine how large the plate will actually be sitting on top of the turntable it's not going to look as bad as I was thinking at the same time a full eight inches here is a little bit overkill and honestly if I end up having to use an eight inch eight inches of rod I may actually go ahead and use that quarter inch rod from work instead of this five millimeter stainless rod that I have sitting on my desk for my other project just because one costs me money and the other one doesn't if it was only you know five six inches of the stainless rod even though that's you know less than half the you know the difference is less than half the length it's you know three quarters ish let's say of the full length and I'm not actually saving that much it makes a difference to me that difference in my mind makes a difference uh, that difference in numbers in my mind makes a difference and therefore I uh, that's where I draw the line you got to draw a line somewhere right so getting back to what I was talking about um, <laughs> now here is the interesting thing how exactly we design this so I've designed this straight across in the line here we technically can rotate around we don't necessarily need to uh, have it continue heading this way that's not a problem if it does because for example let me take this right here um, that is only 68 so that's you know a little over two and a half inches close uh, two and three quarters maybe let's see secondary units inches yeah close to two and three quarters so that's close to two and three quarter, quarters inches between here and here that's gonna end up being three and a quarter let's say over on this side so if we keep on going for another two inches that's only six inches wide which is again relative to the plate that's going to be above this not going to be terribly large so there's going to be a plate up here that's going to be eight to ten inches again I'm not sure because I didn't bring it home but in comparison that's not going to be a particularly large assembly but I will just bring up for now in case uh, we want to we can for example put the multiplex gears over here and that would be perfectly okay now earlier I was talking about how this was gonna mesh with 8 inch teeth over on this side and it occurs to me that that is not going to work because if I put 8 inch teeth and then fix those to another 16 like I was talking about uh, that's gonna be a problem uh, it's gonna bind up when we try to move this rod up and down so let's see <laughs> I, uh, so here was my thinking originally that I did not explain this is going to be this part right here this lower gear is going to extend down however long we need it to extend down in order to multiplex the entire height of the uh, device and what that means is that 
we're going to be printing mostly that, and therefore that's why I wanted to keep that six tooth. That way we're printing less. If I just kept the 16 tooth here so that we keep our one to one, A, it pushes it out further. This uh, ring, again, has to be tangent to that ring right there. And therefore that's going to lengthen, uh, that's going to enlarge our overall space, which is less ideal. And B, I'm going to be printing, let's say, a five inch tall gear that is this big. And that's a big difference from a five inch gear, uh, tall gear that is the size of that gear. It's a very, it's quite a large distance difference. So at this point, we got a couple options. Um, we can add another link in the assembly so we can go, we've got 16 to eight, 16 to eight, and then could we do another eight? Would that work? Actually, yeah, we, 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 we could do another eight. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's do that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the multiplexing shaft into here. Because again, we're going to need somewhere to put, to align our uh, gears with. And I'm going to go ahead and just reuse this plane right here. It doesn't actually matter which plane I use because it's just going vertically. I'm going to go ahead and grab that because that's the gear we're going to be meshing with. I'm going to go back to this line and uh, we'll be perpendicular to that. Let me go ahead and turn all these guys off so that we're not seeing them. Cool. Uh, where's my line? Where's my housing line? Did I not project that? Project? All right. These are all construction lines. Again, same exact thing. We're going uh, off to that, and we know our eight, th eight teeth gear is 24 inches, uh, 24 millimeters rather. So we can go ahead and tangent that to that, turn that into a construction line. And again, this is a nominal five millimeter rod at this point. It may very un well end up being quarter inch. And let us go ahead and now that that's the case, now that I'm not sure what size it's going to be, rod size, and um, I was gonna do, I was considered doing, mm, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that as five millimeter. So let's rename this rod size. Okay, finish, and Let's grab the multiplexer shaft. Oh, I called the other one the multiplexer shaft too. Uh, this is the output shaft, is what this is. A derp. Output shaft. And uh, what we're going to do here is just do a two sided, and we're going to make it the same size as the uh, multiplexer shaft. Uh, try this again. Give me that face fusion. Face. Distance to object. Face. Did I get the wrong, f whoops. Uh, deleted the wrong one. I'm getting the correct face up here, but down here it is being a dork. Nope. Stop. There we go. All right, and we are in the output shaft. Uh, what you call it? So that is correct. And that's our assembly thus far. Uh, let me color these in to make them a little more uh, easy to see. We'll call that steel. That's fine. And then plastic uh, mat 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 where's yellow mat yellow mat blue mat 
and the next gear I'll do, I'll do a different color. And I just changed this name to Output Shaft, but the way I was envisioning this when I said actually we can add another eight tooth is having an intermediary shaft. So this shaft will have a uh, eight tooth uh, gears to mesh to, and then those will mesh to a 16 tooth gear or whatever. Honestly, it could be whatever, because again, we're going to have different, uh, what you call it, and the drive shaft will be a different shaft altogether. And again, this is just to keep, and it's one of those things, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It's not necessarily, nah, we, we need it to mesh all the way through. So it is necessary. It is necessary to, uh, yeah, it is necessary to have this intermediary gear here. And uh, in case you're not following along with my random rambling, I will show you in just a moment as we create our first set of gears. So this is going to be another eight. Okay. And that guy, like all the others, is going to get uh, aligned onto the shaft, align, center that, center that, okay. And then we will align this at the home position for the uh, multiplexer gear which would be aligning the bottom of this or the top because these are the same size width you can do bottom or top it's not necessarily uh, it doesn't necessarily matter and plastic mat uh, not translucent green so there's that and now on the drive shaft so each of these uh, intermediary gears are going to spin free. That way, we don't have gears binding in between while this is uh, while this is spinning. So, for example, if these were all, if all the gears were stuck to the same one, and then we had our output shaft with the multiplex gears on them, if, for example, the slower gear, the faster gear, etc., the reverse gear. If we had that shaft. Uh, if we had all these in sync, then when this bottom one turned, it would turn the top one, uh, the next one up, and then the next one up would also engage with the multiplex gear over here. As it is, this one will spin because it's being driven, and then the next gear on the output shaft will spin, and that will spin all the other output gears, and those output gears will not will spin each of their individual intermediary gear but the intermediary gear will not affect the movement of all the other intermediary gears i hope that made sense <laughs> uh at this point i'm going to go ahead and um actually let's pattern 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 on path I actually have never patterned up a rod before, so this will be interesting to see whether or not it works. It does not work. Okay. I can't select that. Although I could select that. Um, spacing. Start point zero. And the distance between gears, again, as this uh, multiplexer gear moves up and down, it needs to have a gap between each of the gears that it's interfacing with where it is not interfacing any gears. Otherwise, or at least it, while it's not interfacing two gears at once is what I should, how I should say it, it can't inter interface two gears at once because then the whole entire mechanism would bind. So we need a gap at least big enough, which would be, I'm gonna call it 11 millimeters, might be able to get away with 10 plus a little bit, but I'm going to call it 11. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
I forget where the, uh, I could have swore there was a flip direction um, button here. This is funny. Where is, so if I can't set start point to one, then where is my flip direction button? Because I want you going up the other way. All right. Nope, that's the same direction. Uh, we will go ahead then and intermediary shaft, front, project, that, okay, and do this, and we'll use this as our line and see how that changes what we're trying to do here. Uh, one thing I will mention is that obviously all these gears, so for example, this one is the uh, drive gear. I haven't been renaming them and I haven't been putting them into individual components. So this gear and this gear are the, uh, that would be the eight tooth gear and the 16 tooth gear these really should be in the same component and you know what maybe i will just do that now just drag that up um grouping them into individual components the gears i don't feel is really necessary in this particular design but it's something i probably should do so uh back to where we were at pattern along line component that Select, path. All right, we're going the correct direction this time. Spacing, distance is going to be 11, like I said. Start point zero. Oh, actually, sorry. This is going to be uh, 11 plus the thickness of the gears. And I should probably go ahead and make that a property at this point, parameter. your thickness 10 okay that way if we ever need to change it we can and unfortunately these gears the biggest problem with all of these gear uh, which columns is that you can't go back and edit them all the gear programs that I've tried you can't go back in and change the parameters on them after they're made unfortunately which is a little bit of a problem but it's one of those things uh, just don't screw up right uh, this we're going to fix that then gear thickness and let's see so like if this is first gear a standard gear and then this is faster this is slower then I would want one more to do reverse so there we go um, and this more or less dictates the overall height um, I say more or less because the reverse gear is going to have to have its own secondary shaft to interfere, interface with, and it can just have another eight millimeter gear on it to uh, reverse the direction. So let's, um, I'm trying to decide what order to do this in. Hmm. So here's the deal. I keep on saying there's a drive shaft over here. Technically speaking, that drive shaft is going to be one removed because we need to uh, add gear reduction. Um. And the gear reduction obviously needs to, uh, so if the gear reduction, if we do the gear reduction smaller, it would help. It would help to have another rod to uh, work with. So let's just do that. It simplifies the design is what it does. Um, 
I'm just trying to visualize this, how exactly I want this laid out, because again, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we are just wandering off in space in this direction. Uh, we probably should start wrapping back around, in which case this shaft, rather than being perpendicular, I should probably change to like a 45, and then we'll do another 45 this way. So let's go ahead and change that. That is perpendicular instead. 45 okay and obviously that did not align correctly and strangely I have two of these which means that I uh, was not paying attention when I did this and instead of uh, instead of going back into the uh, previous uh, alignment I started a new one Close, 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 close. Will you? Uh, all right. There we go. Clicking always works better, right? So that on that. Okay. Align. That. There we go. That to the multiplexer gear. Multiplexer gear. Bottom that. Okay, looks good, finish, and we are way off. What did I do wrong? Huh. How did this move? Let's see, let's see, let's see. That is correct. That is not correct. Okay. Uh, let's fix that. Deleted. Finish position. Deleted. Um, modify. Align. Try this again there huh why are you not going to center modify align center center there we go much better modify align Kill that. There. There. All right. And we are not in the correct position, are we? Oh, no, we are. All right, cool. I got scared for a second there and uh, got concerned that we were not at our 45 degrees that we were shooting for. All right, cool. Everything exactly where we want it. Beautiful. Okay, um, next is the interfacing shaft for the outputs. So let's go ahead and get that one. And again, that will be, oh, we got an eight to 16 and then an eight to 16. So this eight eight to 16, then eight to 16. 16 to 8, 16 to 8. That should still be one, right? So I should be able to just make this another 8 millimeter uh, gear. It's one of those things, uh, doing math on stream, right? Doing math on stream is always a recipe for success. What are we going to call this? Uh, uh, gear ratio interface shaft. Okay. And before we're using this plane, so we'll just keep on using that plane, I'm going to go ahead and project like we were doing before. 
that and that okay the same exact project as we had before and actually let me back up a sec back to keeping these in groups and I didn't really think it was necessary at the time but the more I look at uh, multiplex gears mesh gears the uh, more I look at it the more I do want to clean this up get in there all right let's go huh why can't I cut you and paste you hmm all right I'll come back to that later so here we are and whoops no don't do that give me back this sketch I wouldn't be in this sketch turn all this stuff off turn that stuff off make those construction lines make that 24 make that a construction line make that um Do that and then make that tangent. And then we got our five millimeter rod just like we did before. Rod size. And we make that again equal to the uh, multiplexer shaft. There it is. Two sided distance to that distance to that okay there we go and now we can hop back out turn all these back on so we can enjoy what we're looking at And so, uh, here's the thing, and this is <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking because. I went about this a little silly. I felt like there was something else I could have done here and it was just not clicking in my mind and it just suddenly clicked in my mind. So I'm trying to figure out how far back I want to go. Uh, basically each of these gears, they don't necessarily need to be all the same size and I'm going to have to break this up at some point. So. yeah this is we're, we're gonna have to uh come all the way back here live and learn live and learn so the way this is going to work is i'm going to have this is going to go up and down and i'm going to just interface with the different gear ratios on different shafts uh, I was thinking about doing something a little tricky thing here, but I can't, it just keeps on spreading out and uh, I'm frankly, uh, I'm overcomplicating things. It doesn't have to be this complicated. So let's back up and do this in a more sensible fashion. <laughs> Unfortunately, All right. um, this can go back to being perpendicular because we will interface at all different angles on the different drive outputs this one right here uh, if we want to keep this in this position at the uh, eight, uh, 24 millimeter size in that case that we would have our 16 to 8 and a 16 to 8 so that'd be a 1 and 
clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. So that would be normal speed. And it makes sense for the, the first one we do to be normal speed. Uh, the next one we do, and well, let's just get this finished really quick. So I can still include all this. Oh yeah, I gotta fix the, uh, so let's delete all that, align that, okay, align that to that, you guys get the drill. So this is an output, and this shaft I'm going to now shrink down here. So. Uh, Instead of going, whoops, let's finish position. Sorry about that. Instead of going all the way up with the shafts, instead I'm just going to go a distance. And it looks like I went in the wrong direction anyway. Let's check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went in the wrong direction anyway when I made this one. Uh, so that. It's funny because I could have swore I uh, looked at this and said, oh no, this was the wrong direction. And it turns out it wasn't. Distance 50. Okay, that is the bottom direction. And I need to get in the habit of not. Uh, so that one and that one need to be swapped. That goes to the bottom. I need to get in the habit of not just hitting escape every single time. In Fusion, at least. Because in Fusion, it's extra steps. When I'm programming, it's not extra steps to hit escape. Uh, escape just clears out what you're doing, so it's not really that big of a deal. I'm going to shrink that down to 50 for right now. Um, this, as stated, is going to be a 1-1 reduction. And we're going to go ahead and put the out sh put shaft over here. But first, I want to get the all the other ones lined up so that you can see what I'm talking about what, uh, with the uh, new setup. So... I'm going to do what we did before. Project. Uh, come on. Whoops. Actually, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, create a new component. And this one is going to be fast shaft. Project that. Uh, sorry. Use plane three, project, and see if we can find, there it is, that. Okay. Uh, go ahead and get our edge like we've been doing. So all this looks the same, right? And then we're going to really quick turn everything off. And from there, whoops, go 45, stop, 45, 24, tangent, and rod size, rod size, and extend that one up and again I'm going to go two directions one will go down but the other one is going to be an arbitrary height for now now this is the fast shaft right and actually at this point I'm going to go ahead and stay in here and uh, the fast shaft we therefore are going to want a smaller gear reduction so that each turn of the eight teeth, uh, of the 16 teeth spins ours faster. And do, 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 do. So we're going slower right now. If we do another eight. Eight, 16, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so we are going to do Eight teeth. I 
I am not making noise right now because uh, one of those things, I've only just started st streaming and we are now at an hour and a half and my brain is starting to turn off, especially because it's a bit late where I'm at right now. So, align components that, again, all this is going to look normal until we get the uh, gear reduction in here. I uh, don't capture position just yet. Modify, align here to our other one there. There we go. And now we can capture position. And now we are going to need a uh, another shaft as part of this uh, assembly. So we got a uh, 16 to 8 and then a 16 to 8. Wow, so, something about the math's not <laughs> um, throwing me off here. 16 times 16 to 8 times 16 to 8. Am I just reducing it? I might just be reducing it. Um, you know what? I'm thinking. So here's the thing. In between it getting late and me getting a bit tired right now and my mind just not being up for doing math right now. I'm thinking that I'm going to turn this into a two-parter. I wanted to get this done in one sitting, but at the rate I'm going, this might end up being three hours. So in that case, uh, rather than have a three hour stream, let's do it in two one hour, uh, two hour and a half streams. And I can go back and double check my math because my brain evidently keeps on saying. So this drives this at an eight to six. Uh, well, it's a two to one, it's a two to one. So every one of these spins that twice. This is spinning twice as quickly as that one and spinning this one. This It's spinning this one for every one turn of this, this is spinning twice. So yeah, I am still reducing it more. I am being silly, right? That's a two to one, so two to one. That spins twice for every one of this. This is spinning one to one. So this is two times for every one of that. And then this is spinning that two times. So this is actually four times right now. Yeah, so I've been doing my math silly right now. So that needs to be corrected. All right, yeah, um, that is a bit dispiriting, <laughs> but uh, yeah, how about I get some sleep and we come back to this tomorrow? Uh, one of those things. If I wasn't streaming, I'd just power through this and be all right, you idiot. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to give myself a little bit of break here. I'm not going to be so too harsh on myself, and I'm just going to say, okay, not everything works out uh, the first time. I know it doesn't work out the first time. So let's actually, and this is a good excuse. My good excuse is going to be, ready? I'm going to go ahead and print what we have so far, and then we're going to have a physical model to play with. And that's my excuse for why we're not going to finish this today. So uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, sorry this stream is longer than I intended. Again, I was hoping, honestly, uh, it's one of those things, probably a little silly to have hoped this to get done in an hour. It probably was going to, at the earliest, be an hour and a half stream if I didn't just go crazy and overcomplicate things and get the math wrong. Um, two hours might even be have been more reasonable guess. Even that would have been all right. I would have been all right with a two hour stream. But seeing as I'm clearly off here, um, yeah, it is what it is, like I said. So thanks for following along with it, me. Uh, obviously, works flow streams 
things are going to go wrong because they're not dedicated videos where I can do editing and make sure everything is perfect. So, this is part of the adventure. I hope you enjoyed the adventure. Uh, have a great day, evening, afternoon, wherever the heck you are. And I will catch you on the next stream where we will finish this off.